Hi, today is February 3rd and we're continuing to walk through the Bible and we're answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We are, I'm reading the One Year Bible, the New Living Translation, and we're referring to these scriptures, Exodus 17, verse 8, 19 through um, verse 15, Matthew 22, 34 to chapter 23, 12. Psalms 27, 7 through 14, and Proverbs chapter 6, 27 through 35. And we're continuing to follow the Israelites. They have been delivered from Egypt with God's mighty hand, the power of God's mighty hand. They've crossed the Red Sea. They've seen Pharaoh and all of his army destroyed. And now they're in the wilderness and, you know, you would be tempted to think they're going to live happily ever after. But God gives us the rest of the story. And uh, it's not that way. There's struggles. They get thirsty and they cry out to God and they complain against Moses and they think they should go back, you know, to Israel because they forgot about all the bad things. And they just remembered that they could drink and they had something to eat. And God gives them miraculous water and he gives them food, manna from heaven. And now what's happening is that the people of Israel are attacked by the Amalekites. And Moses commands Joshua to take the army out. And Moses is going to hold up his authority, his the rod that God gave him authority, a symbol, as a symbol of authority. And he's going to go up on a hill and he's going to hold this authority out and he's going to intercede for the battle. And so what happened was when whenever he dropped this staff and he dropped his hand, the Amalekites were winning. But if you would hold his hand up, the Israelites would win. So Aaron and her, H-U-R, went up to sit with him and help him to hold up his authority. So they were holding up the authority that God gave Moses. And at the end of the day, his hands had held steady. And as a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. That's in verse 13. And after the, after the battle was won, Moses built an altar and he called it Yahweh Nisi, which means Jehovah my banner. The Lord is my banner. And he said, um, they have raised their hand against their fist against the Lord's throne. So now the Lord will be at war with the Amalek generation after generation. So they're going to be defeated completely. And then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law comes to visit. He brings Moses' wife and his two sons and they sit down and they have a conversation and Moses tells Jethro, all the things that God has done and all the difficulties that he's experienced. And Jethro is delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel. That's in chapter 18 in verse 9. And uh, he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord in verse 10. Jethro said, for he has rescued you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. The reality is there is only one God and uh, there are other powers because he created, you know, the angels and uh, Satan and there are other powers that God created. Um, but, you know, he didn't make Satan, Satan, he made him a beautiful angel and Satan rebelled. And, uh, but there is no other God there. Our God is the only God. And so Jethro went out and he watched Moses judge the people from morning to night. And they all gathered around. They waited in line for a very long time so that they could appear before Moses and Moses could determine what, you know, their disputes. And uh, Jethro was humble enough, you know, to offer advice. You know, it takes humility to offer advice. You're creating a vulnerability. Um, you're, you know, you're putting yourself out there for rejection and uh, for somebody to get angry with you if you offer advice. So it takes humility 
to offer advice, but it also takes humility to listen to advice, even if it comes from somebody that you don't think really likes you very well, and maybe even your enemy. And uh, so Jethro gives Moses great advice, and he says, you should appoint capable men and, you know, have them um, be over groups of 1,000, 150, and 10. And they should determine, you know, the disputes, and they should judge uh, uh, between the people in the people of Israel. And you just save the, the really hard problems, the really hard cases for you. So they instituted something like the judicial system in the United States, where you have a lower court and then a higher court and a higher court. And at the top, you have the Supreme Court. So Moses was, in effect, the Supreme Court. And Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice, and he followed his suggestions. So there was a really great relationship. Remember in Proverbs Yesterday, we talked about listening to your father and the commandments are honor your mother and your father. Honor somebody that is older than you. They have lived, whether they've done it right or wrong, if they were teachable, they're wise and uh, years will bring wisdom. So then um, the Israelites camped in the wilderness around Mount Sinai and they set up camp there and Moses was was called to meet with God. God says, come, I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses. I will come to you in a thick cloud. God has been telling me over and over again, come to me, come to me. And here's the Lord inviting Moses to come to him and he's going to meet with him. And he said, uh, on the day we're getting ready, they have to have a preparation. They have to prepare uh, and consecrate themselves and they have to be in a place where they, you know, they, they'll survive this meeting. Uh, on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai as all the people watch. And um, it's a powerful thing to meet with God. And um, so they, so Moses was preparing the people of Israel to meet with God. Matthew chapter 22, Jesus has stumped the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they're still trying to stump them. And an expert in religious law tried to trap him. And this is in verse 35. In verse 36, here's his question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And he's quoting Deuteronomy 6, 5. This is the first and greatest commandment. And a second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. And that is in Leviticus 19, 18. And what he's saying is, and then he says, the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So what he's saying is everything is based on this. Give, you know, like the kingdom of heaven is like a man who went and sold everything to buy the treasure in the field. He says, give all of your heart and all of your soul in all of your mind. When I married my husband, I committed to him. I made a covenant to give all of myself, all of my heart, and all of my soul, and all of my of my um, strength, and all of my heart. I, he, I made him first in my life. I made him a priority. And that is the bottom line. The Ten Commandments, the first four are about a relationship with God. And then the next six are about our relationship with people. And uh, this is the foundation of everything that God tells us. It's about our relationship with him and our relationship with people. And uh, so he talks about the Pharisees and he says everything they do is for show. Like follow, don't follow their example. They're, they're telling you the truth. They're telling you what the Bible says. But basically do what they say and not what they do. He says, because everything they do is for show. They're not following the words of God. Um, and we are so tempted to look at me, look at me and see what I can do or what I can't do. Right. Um, and he speaks as God in heaven, as your spiritual father, our father who art in heaven. And then he talks about humility. He says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled. That's in verse 12. Of chapter 23 those 
let me repeat that. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. And humility isn't about, humility is a little tough to define and put your finger on. Humility really is, is um, not about me, basically. It's not about me. It's manifested in obedience. It's manifested in honor. And it's manifested not in, oh, woe is me. I'm so bad. Look at me. Help me. Help me. Um, you know, or, you know, I'm so, you know, like, oh, it's not me. Um, some people say, well, it wasn't me. It was God. Well, it was you. It was you and God. It just like Moses, he held up the authority, you know, the authority that God gave him. It was them together. Um, so it isn't really, you know, like one side of the coin, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. The other side of the coin is I'm so good, I'm so good. The coin is still pride. Um, and it's really more about, it's about God, it's about people. And I want to humble myself. And not because I want to be exalted, I just want to be in a position of humility. Because as I humble myself, the Lord will take care of me. And he will lift me up. Um, Psalm 27, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me, come and talk with me. The Holy Spirit has been saying to me, come to me and you will see, come to me and you will see. And that's such a hard thing to do, but come and talk with me. And here's what God wants for a response. The psalmist said, and my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. I am coming. Like when he calls to meet with you, just say yes and meet with him in the morning, meet with him at night, invite him to be with you through the day. Um, and you know, like, I don't know if you've ever invited anybody and they didn't come. It's such a rejection and such a disappointment. And God is the same. He's inviting us all the time. Come, come to me and you will see. And then he said, you know, you've always been my helper. That's my testimony. God has always been my helper. He's never, never left me. He's never abandoned me. And he teaches me how to live. And uh, I'm confident that I'm going to see the Lord's goodness and I'm going to wait patiently for the Lord. And in Proverbs chapter six, it talks about if a Satan, if a Satan, if a thief steals something from you, they owe you seven times in return. And Satan is a thief. And if he has stolen something from you, he owes you seven times seven times what he stole. If he stole a son, he owes you seven sons. Claim seven sons. If he stole a daughter, claim seven daughters in return for one and uh, claim that daughter to be returned. And there is seven times that, uh, that you're owed. So declare that in the name of Jesus and by the power of God's word. So I want to absolutely invite you to come I come and listen every day as we walk through the Bible, answering those questions. Um, but just absolutely come to him every day and invite him to come to you. And you will have an absolutely amazing, blessed day.